Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for tomorrow from the betting perspective, and more specifically from a contrarian betting perspective. And what we do here is we try to identify the most uh, talked about outcomes, the nar most narrative-driven outcomes, the outcomes which seem to be supported by the easiest explanation, and attempt to fade those. And, and the reason for that is simply because of my experience of the way markets work. And whenever you have everybody kind of contributing to, to, to creating a market, usually the stories that are the easiest ones to tell are the ones that, you know, carry with it the most ownership and carry with it the most you know, overvalued uh, part of the line and, and the parts and the, the outcomes which are not as easy of a story to tell tend to have better values. And, and what I found in the UFC world in MMA is this, uh, this dynamic is even more dramatic um, simply because the way groupthink works within the MMA community is they, they talk about these fights and they get really settled into some very binary outcomes, like either A wins in this fashion or B wins in that fashion. Um, so it's pretty easy to identify the overvalued piece. Now, what's not so easy is to figure out what to bet instead. Um, so you do have to know a little bit about the fights to, 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 get a hold of that, but it's not very difficult to figure out what you should not be doing. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go through this, and the idea and the concept is to teach you guys to think about betting markets a little more critically. Instead of just saying that, boy, oh boy, it's just so easy to handicap these fights because of what I've seen in the last two fights, you know, and be on the same things that everybody else, you know, that type of, of, of approach can lead to trouble in all types of betting markets, from this to the sports betting, to the stock market, et cetera. So we're gonna go through fight by fight and, and try to get a sense for what the public has been talking about. And you know we're gonna try to bet against it. So let's go over the rules here. There are 13 fights on the card and we are going to bet uh, one thing on every fight. And that's not the best money management system in the world, but we don't care. Uh, secondly, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight. And also, that's not the best money management system in the world. We don't care. And for us, one unit is going to be $180, a 10 times high. Good luck to us. Um, and again, I do think it's healthy to, to disclose what is being bet by people who are recommending stuff. I know people like to quote things in terms of units for a lot of reasons, but I don't know. I just find it a little more transparent to do it this way. And the other thing is that because we're being contrarian, just because we want to have some fun, we are going to presume that the first 12 fights on this card, we are going to lose. And as a result, we're going to need to get all of our money back in the main event. So the main event is going to have something that is what, uh, 12 to 1 or higher. All right. So let's get into this and you'll see how we analyze these things along the way. So we have Karalem Post, uh, Gregorio versus Chad Ellinger. Ellinger. And what people are very much settled on is that Anglinger is, is 37. It's probably his last fight. If not, he's kind of on the way out. Um, while he's a veteran, you know, he really doesn't have a lot to offer. And this Gregorio guy has is a very, very good striker, pretty aggressive, doesn't have a lot of wrestling. But this is one of those fights where they just, you know, they just give him a fight that he can hopefully win. And the thing is, is that he is only minus 170. Okay. So, so the reality is, is that I can't really think of anybody that's actually going to be taking Chad Ellinger here So at 142. So as a result, he's probably the best side. So we're not going to play a, pop, a, a, a prop here. We're just going to play him for 180 plus the 142. And we're going to put all these in at the end. Uh, usually they don't let us while we're recording because Zoom and DraftKings don't come along too much. Nonetheless, Tiago Moises versus Rich, Mitch Ramirez. So Mitch Ramirez you know, taking this fight on short notice um, against a very well-accomplished grappler. Seems like pretty easy here that, that Moises wins and he wins by submission. So what that means is that we can't bet that. I mean, we can't bet the, the Moises by submission prop here. So what can we bet? I mean, the only thing we can really do, I and mean, we could play Ramirez to win, if we want, or we could probably play Moises by decision, which is something that hasn't been talked about all that much. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll put Moises by decision, and that would be plus 240. That's good enough. Okay. 
Moving on, we have Jacqueline Amorim versus Corey McKenna. So we have two female fighters, both of whom have dis you know, displayed a decent amount of grappling in their, uh, in their UFC careers. Amorim has uh, one fight where she was destroying Sam Hughes in the first round, couldn't get the sub, and then ran out of gas and just got out, out cardio the rest of the, of, the, uh, of, the, of the fight. Then she came back against uh, uh, Montserrat Ruiz, who was just kind of known as being really, really awful. And Amorim, you know, fought off a little bit of adversity and then, you know, eventually I think got the third round uh, finish. Corey McKenna, uh, two fights back, you know, she uh, she actually very, she disappointed. People were expecting to go to wrestling and she lost. And then she went to the wrestling and, and won pretty easily. So what people are saying here is that Amorim is, is really that first round fighter. You know, she's really going to go after it the first round. Um, and most of the finishing upside, I guess, would be towards towards Amory, where if McKenna wins, McKenna is going to probably maybe take over late, maybe just be a little bit more technically sound. So those are the things you really can't bet here. I think Amory by finish is something that's going to be overbet. And I think McKenna by decision is something that's going to be overbet. So what we're going to do is we're going to try McKenna inside the distance. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to take a real shot and play her by knockout because what could end up happening here is if Amorim does in fact run out of gas, McKenna could get takedowns herself and maybe win by a ground and pound. Um, so let's take a look and see what those odds are. I don't know if I have the, the have it in me to do that, but let's just see. It's going to be cer cer certainly something with, with McKenna, either McKenna inside or maybe Amorim by decision. So look, this Amorim by decision plus 500. That is actually very juicy. And as a matter of fact, Amram by decision is not that much is not that much worse than McKenna by hey. That's pretty. That's pretty crazy. Let's take a look at what just McKenna is just regular inside the distance. So it would be plus four twenty five. Oh boy, which is the, first of all, which is the more contrarian play? McKenna by inside or Amrim by decision? I think the Amrim by decision is actually more contrarian because of all the all the talk about how she's, you know, she has more of the first round upside. So let's just do that. We'll play Amrim by decision plus 500. Or excuse me, plus, uh, yeah, 500 for one. All right, Josh Kulabau versus Danny Silva. So I just heard enough. I just heard enough about how awesome Danny Silva was in his last fight. Heard enough about how his contender's fight was a classic. Heard enough about how he is going to be the, the you know, just way too high volume. And Josh Kulabau's low volume. Danny Silva's the big hipster play of the week. We're, we're, ju we're just not going to do it. Um, we're going to play Kulabau and... and, and um, we're going to play him seeing as he's so low vol volume, we're going to play him, uh, inside the distance. So let's do it. Kulabau inside the distance is going to be plus 275. And we are going to try that. Oops. Put in the actual bet. Kulabau inside, um, plus 275 for 180. We're going to stake. We're going to end up doing stake all singles. Okay, moving on. Jafiel Filio versus Ode Osborne. Boy, this is a tough one because, you know, as far as who to take, I've seen some love from both sides. Um, so you really can't bet either side of this. But again, as far as like how this fight's going to go, you know, they have Osborne's got some KO upside, especially early. And Filio is going to be more of the submission guy. So what I'm not really getting any of is this fight goes the distance. So that's what we're going to play. here. We're just going to play Filio and Osborne to go the distance plus the 200. All right. Uh, Josiah Nunez versus Chelsea Chandler. Okay. So this is kind of like the, the reverse uh recency bias there. So Chelsea Chandler in her last fight looked just abysmal. She was, there's this meme uh, 
video of her literally running away from Norma Dumont, okay? And yet, the entire civilized world is on it. And they're like, well, well, we'll dismiss that. It was funny, but she's, uh, but she's just much better. And, and for whatever reason, even though Nunez is minus 142, I think that the entire civilized world is taking Chelsea Chang. So we're just going to take Nunez minus the 142. Now, again, just because it's a favorite doesn't mean it's not contrarian. Because, again, I, I, I challenge you to pull the Internet and go, go around all Twitter, you know, MMA Twitter, and find anybody that's not taking Chelsea Chang. It's the ultimate hipster play of the week, and we will be favored. Natan Levy versus Mike Davis. So you have wrestler Levy versus Mike Davis, who's just pretty well-rounded all around. Mike Davis has shown that he can win by takedowns, as evidenced by his nine takedowns in the last fight. And we've seen him be able to get uh, to get uh, you know a, a, get a striking going, whatever. But one line here, which I just don't get, okay, is straight up his inside the distance line. If I'm not mistaken, his inside the distance line is like, well, plus 165, all right? That's not that's not bad. Um, so I what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fade this this whole takedown thing. Um, because in his last fight, it was against Borshev, who really just gives up takedowns all together. I mean, all over the place. So I am actually going to just take Mike Davis by knockout here. Um, and here you get the plus 225. We're going to go with, you know, with a lot of, and even if he gets the takedowns, he can still win by a ground and pound anyway. So we're going to play Mike Davis to win by knockout plus 225. All right. Uh, Christian Rodriguez against Isaac Dolgarian. When, when are people going to learn? We're going to do the same thing. So Isaac Dolgarian, all the grappling upside. He's 6-0. and He finishes stuff in the first round. Okay. Um, and on the other hand, Christian Rodriguez, he's shown that when he can survive the first round, as he did against Raul Rosas, then he could come back to win. So what can you not bet here? You cannot bet Dolgarian round one. And you cannot bet Rodriguez by decision. What we can do is anything else. So we could either play Rodriguez inside the distance, which is certainly possible. I mean, that's you imagine if Dolgarian really gassed out and Rodriguez could actually get a decision, or we could play Dolgarian by decision. You wonder why? Because he's never been out of what round one. Well, who says he can't make it out of round one? He was a high, high, uh, a high-rated uh, collegiate wrestler. He's got to have some cardio. So we're going to actually play Dolgarian by decision here, and we will be getting 225 for our money. Um, moving on, we have Gerald Mearshart versus Brian Barberina. This one we're going to lose, but we just have no choice. Okay, This is a fight which is completely designed for Gerald Mearshart to win. He's got all the, the grappling upside. That's all he does is grapple. And Brian Barberina is the worst grappler in the world. All he does is get taken down. And yet, he's only a plus 200 underdog. So he's got to have something, right? So we're going to play him. And as a matter of fact, I'm really inclined to play him inside the distance, but I don't really don't have that in me. So we're, we're going to play Barbarina just to keep the striking going, avoid the submission, and win a plus 200. Probably should go ahead and just play inside the distance, but we're just going to play in plus the 200. All right, uh, moving on. Penny Kianza versus Macy Chason. These people, these fighters fought before. Um, and the only thing that's different is now Macy Chason has, has, made herself into much more of a wrestler than she had been. So we're probably presuming it's very similar. Maybe Chason will just kind of like win a boring uh, takedown-based decision. I really haven't seen anybody take Kiansad. Maybe I should just do that. Yeah, I mean, it's only plus 190. 
I mean, I don't know who's taking her. So we're going to do this. Tian Saad plus the 190 for one. And again, if all these, these sides are making you uncomfortable, then, then you're doing it right. Kennedy and Shiku versus Oven St. Pru. So you have, this is again a little, it's going to seem not contrarian, but it sort of is. So Kennedy and Shiku, he, you know, he's, he's a minus a million favorite and Oven St. Pru is old. Okay. Uh, but what I've been hearing all week is that Kennedy and Shiku is sort of a slow starter. So, so what's the become the real ultra hipster play of the week is Enjuku, it's Enjuku in round two. So that's something we can't bet. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to take the seemingly obvious, but in this case, somewhat contrarian, we will go Enjuku in round one, just plus the 110. I just think there's some value. Okay, um, we have two more fights. We have Brian Battle versus Anj Lusa. So this one, you know, is, is, a, is a very interesting fight. You have Lusa, who is very aggressive, and he goes for a lot of takedowns. He puts a lot of pressure on. So Brian Battle, his real path to victory is going to be, you know, to survive the first round onslaught and then maybe get a late finish or even a decision. So these are the things that we can't bet, right? We, we can't bet Lusa early uh, and we can't bet battle late. So these are our choices. We can either play Lusa to like just kind of get those takedowns and control battle the whole time and win by submission, or excuse me, by uh, decision, or we could just play battle in the first round. And that would be really, really nasty. Let's see what some of these, some of these odds are here. So. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, where is he? Well, let's see. First of all, Lusa by decision plus 275, right? That's reasonable. But let's see what Battle does in round one. Battle to win round one is plus 550. That's what we're going to try. Battle round one plus 550 for 180. So we have 12... We have 12 wagers now, and we want to review what these just atrocious contrarian wagers are. Um, yeah, before we uh, try to get our money back. So once again, Chad Ellinger on his way out into retirement. I don't know why we're playing with only 142. Uh, Moy says uh, probably he's going to get the submission, guy on short notice, but we're going to somehow have him survive to decision. Amarim, I don't know how this is going to happen because she's probably going to gas out. But if she doesn't, hey, maybe we win by decision here. Uh, Kulabal, low volume. And the ultra hipster play of the week, the uh, Danny Silva. Uh, well, if that happens, we're losing. Because so we're going to take Kulabal, not only that, but Kulabal inside the distance. Um, we have the Jafiel Filio Odi Osborne fight, uh, just to go the distance here. Uh, between Osborne's KO upside and Filio's submission upside, no one's really factoring in the fact that neither of those things happen. Chelsea Chandler, the reverse recency bias thing, let her run away again. We'll take Nunez minus 142. Mike Davis, not going to win by getting his takedowns. He's going to win by using a striking, plus 225. Brian Barbarino, probably the worst bet on the card. Only plus 200, given the terrible style matchup here. I don't know why we're doing this, but we're doing it. Uh, and then Penny Kansad, no one's playing her in the rematch against Macy Chason, who's going to control the fight with a new wrestling game. Uh, and and, and Jechaku, uh, slow starter. Well, if that happens, we lose because we have him round one. And then Brian Battle, not only going to survive the onslaught, but going to create an onslaught of his own to win in round one. So when all those things lose, we're going to need to get 12 to 1 or higher from the main event, which is Tai Tuivasa versus... Marcin Taibora, and this has been figured out. We have Tai Tuivasa either gets him out of there early or Taibora takes over late and either gets a late finish or goes to a decision. So those are the things we can't bet. We can't bet Tai Tuivasa early and we can't bet Taibora late or even by decision. So, uh, what can we bet that is under 13 to that's over 13 to one that actually has a shot? 
Well, I was going to say we could play Tui Vasa in, uh, to, in a decision, but that's not going to be enough. So what we can do, we could take a look and see if Tybura can get there in round one, uh, but that night might not be enough. Let's take a look at some of these odds here. I think we're going to end up having to play Tui Vasa late here. Let's just take a look. All right. Um, or what we can do is we could play by an actual uh, method of victory. So that's what we can do. So, for example, Tuivasa by decision is plus 1,200. I mean, I mean, technically, it's only 12 to 1. But you don't think he can do it? The only other thing I would consider is something like Tybura by sub in round one, and that's plus 1,200. How about Tybura by submission in round two? So survive the onslaught, then get the takedown in round two, and get the sub. How about Tybura sub in round three? Hmm. Hmm. I think. Well, let's take a look at his 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 history here. I just want to make sure that he has some at least a couple of submissions on his record before I go and do this. So I'm just going to look at this on the other side of here. Tybura. Let's take a look. KO, decision, decision, decision. Yeah, he has no submissions on his record, so we're not going to be able to do that. Um, so it's going to be Tuivasa by decision plus 1,200. Best of luck. Um, all these times 180 is going to be what it is, which is going to be, let's see, stake all singles, 2340. And we will be putting that in as soon as we get out of here, which is going to be right now. Stay tuned uh, a little later tonight or tomorrow morning for the DFS uh, lineup construction video, and that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.